Hi there, in this episode we're going to talk about international organizations and how governments and citizens can participate in them. So in order to understand um, international organizations, we have to go back in time, back to World War II. World War II was really the low light of world history. Millions and millions of people died. Um, Hitler's Nazi regime killed over 9 million people. And as a result of that slaughter, that, that complete loss of life, um, people started to look at ways to make sure that it was never repeated again. And they're really going to um, start to look to these organizations to help them do that. And what we're also going to see is as technology advances throughout the course of history, it's going to be much, much easier for people to work together, even if they're on different continents and in different countries. So those factors come together, and we're going to see a large number of international organizations created right after World War II. There are basically two different types of international organizations. There's intergovernmental organizations and non-governmental organizations. Now the difference between the two um, is that IGOs, intergovernmental organizations, are made up primarily of, of countries, of nations themselves, or intergovernmental organizations. Um, they're going to be established through a treaty or some kind of other agreement between those countries to act as a charter when creating that group. On the other end, we have NGOs, non-governmental organizations. These organizations are not really part of the government, and they're not really a for-profit business. These are Think of these more as along the lines of charities. Um, they can take government funds, foundation funds, business funds. People can um, uh, give money to NGOs and do so all the time. So like the World Wildlife Fund and Greenpeace, those are two examples of NGOs that work for towards improving the environment. The first international organization we're going to talk about is the Red Cross slash Red Crescent. Red Crescent is um, a term for the Red Cross in the Middle East um, because they're not Christians. The cross is a, um, linked to Christianity. The symbol of Islam is the crescent moon. So depending on where you are in the world and the religious um, ideals of that region, you're going to have a different system um, symbol. So the Red Cross is really about responding to disasters and warfare. Um, they were created all the way back in 1863. Um, their biggest claim to fame is probably the Geneva Convention. This is a set of rules that most countries around the world have signed on to, um, and it it talks about how prisoners of war and how wounded soldiers should be treated during those wars. Um, and it's still used today. It's been updated over the course of the last hundred years or so. Um, individuals can support the Red Cross in multiple different ways. They're always looking for donations. They're always looking for volunteers. Um, and it is a great organization that helps people in need. The next international organization we're going to talk about is the UN. The UN was created in 1945, and it is an organization that basically acts as the referees for the planet. Their pull point is to keep peace and develop friendly relationships among countries. Today, there's over 193 member countries in the United Nations. Um, and the countries join the UN. Um, basically on a vote, the General Assembly, all the members vote, and then they make a recommendation to the Security Council. So the UN is uh, an organization that does a huge amount of work around the globe on many different fronts. Out of the UN comes the World Court. This organization acts as a, a court um, that handles cases between UN members. So if one country wants to sue another country, it can go to the World Court. Um, the UN is the one that determines whether or not a country can be recognized by this court. Next is the United Nations Children Fund. You might have seen um, UNICEF um, trick for treating, where you actually collect money instead of getting um, Halloween candy. UNICEF focuses on a, a variety of different children's issues. And they want to make sure that these children are fed 
um, have an access to education, to sanitation, that they're not going to be um, killed in warfare. There are several um, Hollywood celebrities that have um, volunteered for UNICEF uh, to get the word out. Next up is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Um, the purpose of NATO was, and still is, to protect our allies in Europe. Right after World War II, we enter what was called the Cold War. And basically, the Cold War is like a chess queen. Um, competing members would be us in the United States and all our allies versus the Soviet Union, what you guys know today as Russia, and several of their neighbors and allies. And NATO was our response to their threat against our friendly nations in Europe. Next up is NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. This is a formal agreement that was passed in 1994 um, between the United States, Canada, and Mexico that basically set North America all up as a free trade zone. And what that means is that there would be no extra taxes, no extra tariffs on items that were made in any of those three countries and then traded to one of those other nations. So basically, it's the governments of U the U.S., Canada, and Mexico all encouraging the sale and purchase of each other's goods. Next, we have the WTO, the World Trade Organization. And this was established in 1995. This is an international body that tries to focus on international trade and economic development. So a lot of times when there is a disagreement between two countries who are trade partners, they can take their, um, their problems to the WTO to try to hash them up. The whole point of the WTO is, is to hope to kind of level the playing field for all nations in hopes that we all have economic growth and development. Okay, that's all for today. See you next time.